Hello everybody, welcome to the first of my Photo Basics series where we're going to be looking at film loading. Uh, this is a common question that a lot of students ask or certainly struggle with when they're out in the field doing their own shoots on photographic film. And so in today's tutorial we're going to be looking at loading 35mm uh, film on some of the college cameras. Now at the college we have three different types of 35mm um, camera. They are all Pentax fitting cameras, so they all take Pentax lenses. But the three main types of cameras that we have and that you might be out using um, are the following. So first up we have good old faithful Pentax K1000s, really nice solid built 35mm cameras, very popular with students uh, and give really good results. We also have the P30 series, this one happens to be a P30N, um, which is a little bit different from the K1000 in how you load the film in, which is what we're going to be looking at today. Um, so we're going to look at this one as well. And then the other type of camera that we have is a Vivitar V3800, and this is the N series model. Uh, works the exact same as all of the others. And you um, will load the film in the vote exact same way as you will with the K1000s. The only two of the cameras which have different loading mechanisms are the K1000 and the P30. One is an auto loader, one is a manual loader and they're what we're going to look at today. So the purpose of this video is we're going to go over how you load the films yourself to make sure you're going to capture all the shots that you want because there's nothing worse than loading your film camera up coming back to process it and you've got no pictures on there because the film hasn't fed on into the camera. Uh, we're going to also look at rewinding the film and taking it out getting it ready to come back into the college to process it in the processing rooms and we'll talk about processing film in one of the later videos. When you take one of the film cameras from the college it's really important that you pick one and you go out, you shoot with it, you get used to using it um, and figure out which ones you, which cameras you like and kind of build up that relationship with your camera because you understand how it works and how to get the best results from it. When they're being offered out to you, sometimes you'll hear me say to them, do you want a flashy numbers camera, do you want a moving arm camera or do you want a green dot camera? Uh, so that can sometimes sound a bit weird, but what I'm actually referring to and what we refer to is the light meter that's in them, the sort of light meter that that camera has. And the light meter is the thing that helps you work out whether your exposure is going to be correct. So if your picture is going to be too bright and overexposed or too dark and underexposed. And those three types of light meters, the moving arm, the green dot or the flashy numbers, are what all of our college cameras have. And some people prefer using certain ones as opposed to others and that's fine you pick a camera whichever one you're almost comfortable with that's the one that you keep booking out and you keep using we've got absolutely loads of film cameras so you can book them out very regularly so the first kind of ones that we have would be the Pentax K1000s and they are a moving arm camera and so when you look through the viewfinder at the back of the camera you'll see to the right hand side of that viewfinder a plus a minus and then a little arm that moves and from your lessons learning about exposure, you'll understand that when you change the shutter speed and the aperture in the camera, that will help adjust the exposure. Your film speed, the ISO, is the one thing that you can't change once you've started shooting because it's dictated to by the film that you put in. And in today's tutorial, we're going to be loading Ilford HP5 uh, Plus 400 ISO black and white film, which is... The film that we have as standard at the college and when you book out a film unless you request a different ISO rating that's the one that we tend to give out because that's a good all purpose out and about black and white film. So the K1000's light meter it's this moving arm so when you look through the viewfinder you'll have the plus, the minus and the moving arm and what you've got to do is while you're looking at your subject focus up using the dial at the front of your camera's lens and then once you start changing the aperture or the shutter speed, depending on what effect that you want, do you want a shallow or a wide depth of field? You'll be thinking about the aperture. Do you want a do you want a freeze or show movement? You'd be thinking about the shutter speed. 
And so as you are changing these values in your camera, you'll see that arm starts to move. And if your camera is letting in too much light, the arm will fly straight up into the plus section. If it's not letting in enough light, it will go down to the minus section. And when you've got a perfectly nice balanced exposure, that arm will stay in between the two and you'll see if it's a little bit up or a little bit down, that's not really a problem. It's more personal preference if you want your pictures a little bit darker or a little bit uh, lighter, depending not for aesthetic reasons. But when it's about in the middle, that's telling you this camera is perfectly exposed. You can take the shot, wind it on, and then you move on. The ones that we sometimes call the flashing number cameras are your P30s. So this is, uh, with these cameras, you have to turn them on with a switch at the top. And then when you're looking through, you'll see through the viewfinder on the left-hand side of the viewfinder, you'll see a red M. And then that, that red M will have a number below it. The number that's there constantly is whatever you have the shutter speed set to. And there'll be a flickering number. And the flickering number will be above or below the constant number. And that flickering number, when you're half pushing down the shutter, is telling you what you should change your shutter speed value to, to get a correct exposure. You can compensate this, as we've talked about in the aperture classes, by changing the aperture to allow more or less light into the camera. But when that flickering number goes away and it becomes just the red M and the solid number, which will be whatever your shutter speed is telling you, that is let your, this camera letting you know it's perfectly exposed, or it's going to be perfectly exposed, so you can take the shot, and wind it on and move about. The Vivitar V3800 cameras, or the green dot cameras as we refer to them, work very similar to the K1000s by the way that they, you can change the aperture with the dial at the back of the lens, you can change the shutter speed on the top of the camera, but this time when you're looking through the camera, on the right hand side of the viewfinder, again, similar to the K1000, you will either see, this time, a red illuminated plus, a red illuminated minus at the bottom, or a green circular dot in the middle. And it works the same as with all the cameras. So if it's staying constantly on that red plus, it's letting you know your picture's gonna to be too bright and overexposed. If it's staying on the red minus, it's letting you know the picture is gonna to be too dark and underexposed. So to balance that exposure when you're changing the aperture and shutter speed values when you're out on the street, you will be looking for that green dot. The green dot means you're good to go, it's exposed properly, you take the shot and you wind it on and you can move on. Now again, just like with the others, if it's the green dot and it's slightly flickering on the plus, it means it might be a slightly bright photograph, a little bit overexposed but nothing major. And if it's flickering on the minus, it might be again, it's slightly underexposed. Now that again, photography, it's art, it's personal preference. Some people want their pictures to be a little bit brighter, some people want them to be a little bit darker, and that's fine. So that's just like a brief overview in the kind of three cameras that we've got here. Um, you'll get used to them, you'll pick one of these exposure meters that you like the best and that works best for you and you understand the best, and you'll just keep booking that camera out. Um, make sure if you're unsure about how to set the exposure manually that you go back to your resources that we've already shared with you about exposure and the exposure triangle and aperture, shutter, ISO and how that all relates to working with film photography. It works the same for both film and digital photography. Um, the only thing that you have less control over in the realms of film is, as I said, the film that you're going to put in your camera. That will have its ISO already on there and you put it in, and that's the ISO pretty much set. There are certain things you can do to change that regarding pushing and pulling the film, but again, that's something we'll talk about in a later video. So what we're gonna do now is get on to loading the film. Okay, so here we're gonna look at how to load 35 millimeter film into the cameras. And just to show you from what I explained before, at the college we've got two cameras which are very similar in how to load. So I'm only going to load the one, but the two apply the same. So this is the Pentax K1000. If I open the back of it up here first, you'll see that you have 
an empty part where you put your film cassette in, stretches over the shutter at the back and then on this side you will see that you have a plastic uh, take up spool here that's got some little sprockets inside it. So that camera is very similar to the Vivitar 3800N. Um, so it's a different camera but the loading is the same so if I was to open this one up you'll see empty side for the cassette there goes over the shutter and then there's the exact same take up spool in the side with a little bracket. So the two methods that I'm going to do for these two cameras are this pretty much the same so you use the green dot cameras and the moving line cameras you load them in very much the same way. Looking at the K1000 and how we load these, you're going to take this camera and look at the back of it. On the top you have got your film rewind, you have got shutter speed dial, shutter release and the film wind on. And to get this film inside the camera you're going to take the film advance, lift it up one and without holding the back which is another common mistake that students can make where they're lifting this up one and it won't open as long as you're not holding the back down you're going to lift the top notch up it's going to pop the back and you'll be able to open the back of your camera and you'll see you've got the empty part for the film there it feeds over into the film take up spool so to take, take our film today we're going to be using Ilford HP5 Plus and open it up, take the film, it'll come in a pot. Either from the college you'll get a bought film or you'll have your own film or we'll do a hand loaded film which looks a little bit different. It's still the same Ilford film just in a hand loaded cassette but this one here is a bought film and how you've got to load it is you see there's a top little bit of the film canister here which is raised up. This bit always faces down in the camera so we're going to place that in facing down and then with this bit that we pulled out first push it down and that has locked our film in place. What we're going to do next is take this bit here which is called the film leader pull a little bit out and then where this little notch is in here, the little slit in the take-up spool, we're going to tuck that in. It goes in and then using the shutter on the top we're going to shoot once and wind it on. And you'll see the film will go a little bit tight on the back of the camera. Now some people will say this is quite wasteful but I would rather get shots on my film um, than have to go out and reshoot it. So it almost cost me a frame. But what I like to do is make sure that this film is wrapped around the spiral once I've got a good grip on the film. So I'm going to shoot it once more, wind on again, and you'll see that, that what was the black plastic spiral had now has a full wrap of film all the way around it. Once you're at that point, your film has made a good connection. There's some little teeth just past the film load where you'll be able to look, check that these little teeth are aligned with the holes in the film and that'll give you a good grip. And once you're done there, it's a case of folding up, clicking it down, and then you can shoot and wind on till your frame advance gets to zero. And that is you're ready to go off and load and shoot this film. And remember that that camera, the K1000 and the Vivitar 3800N, both load in very much the same way. So you'll use this method for both those types of cameras that we have at the college. Happy shooting. Okay, so next up we have our Pentax P30 camera. Now this one is a little bit different from the other two types of camera that we've got over at the college in how you load it and I'm going to show you that now. Very similar to the other cameras, you still flip it over to the back. On the top 
you have your shutter dial, you've got your film advance, you've got your film rewind crank. With these cameras, what you have to make sure you do here, which is again another very common fault that students starting out make with these cameras, is on this side you have a power button. At the moment you see a little black notch. You want to make sure this camera is turned on. So what we're going to do is just click that up and you'll see a little tiny red notch appears. That's letting you know the camera's turned on so you'll be able to fire the shutter and wind on. The most common problem people have with these cameras is they the battery's flat or if it's turned off and they'll be, I can't wind on, I can't shoot. If it's turned on, you can shoot you can wind on. So that's one of the most important ones with this camera. So to get in to this camera, same as the last one, we're gonna open out the film rewind arm, raise it up once, pull it again, and it's gonna pop the back open. Now this one's a little bit different in the fact that it still has an area to put the film in. We're still gonna stretch it over, but here we don't have though that slot to tuck the film in for it to take up and this one feeds itself. On the back we have this little device here which is used to put some pressure on the back of the film and roll it to stop it from coming loose and we also have this slightly more raised up plate on the back which helps keep that film in place. So what we're going to do with this film camera again take the pot of film that you've been given open it up and we've got some HP5 again So, sticking out a bit of the top film of the film canister, flip it so it's facing down at the bottom of the camera, pop it in, push the top notch down to lock your film in place, and then with your film leader, and being very careful with all cameras that we don't touch the shutter because we don't want to damage the actual film's camera shutter, stretch that film leader out, and we're going to tuck it just the other side of this little rubber notch. Place it over there, pull enough of the film out so on the little sprockets that we've got at the top that you can see just there and at the bottom, these holes in the film sit nicely into those and then once you're ready you'll see it's still quite slack here but we've got nothing to tuck it into. We're going to close the back, make sure it locks down and then on our frame release up here, I'll bring it up and just focus in the camera a little bit more for us. You'll see you've got an S, which is at the start. We're going to shoot this camera. And you're going to keep winding it until you get to the zero. And the zero is what you want to let you know that you're ready to start shooting. And then this camera is ready to shoot. You can go off, shoot all you want, and once you're happy with it and you've finished your film, you will turn it off, lock it off, and bring it back. Okay, so once you've been out and you've shot your film, you'll be ready to start rewinding it. And the rewind of the film is something that sometimes can go wrong so we're doing a quick little demo here of how to get the film out of the camera to avoid any problems. So starting off with the P30, you finish the shoot, what we need to then do is come back and we're going to turn the camera off. Now the thing with nearly all film cameras that you need to be aware of is when you come to rewind the film you're going to open the rewind arm and then on the film rewind arm, sometimes it's on the actual bit of plastic, sometimes on the arm itself, there's always going to be a little arrow, some directional arrow, which is going to tell you which way you've got to rewind the film. But before you start rewinding it, the bit that people miss out quite a lot, and it can cause you no end of problems if you don't do it, is you have to spin the camera upside down. Now on the bottom of cameras here, for example this one, we've got somewhere where the batteries go, the hole where you attach the tripod, 
and there's a little tiny button with a little R carved on it. This is the rewind button. It acts as like, it unlocks the film so you can rewind it. What you need to do when you want to rewind your film when you finish your shoot, make sure you press that button in. And it will click down. And then when you turn the film, you follow the arrow and you're going to rewind it. And it will start off to feel like they've got a bit of resistance in the film. And as you're rewinding it and rewinding it, the film will suddenly go very loose. Once you feel it go loose, that means the film is done and you can open it out. And there's a bit of a knack to it. You can either keep rewinding until it all goes completely loose and the whole film's gone back inside the cassette. Or you can rewind, if you listen to a click, you can just catch it with a little bit of the film leader hanging out. And that sometimes can help you and make it a little bit easier when you come to process the film yourself in the processing rooms. So looking at our arrow, it's telling me I've got to wind this way. So take the rewind wheel, rewind it. Keep rewinding, you can hear it. Sometimes a bit disheartening, we're hearing the crunching. But rewind it. It's gone loose. So I would open the film canister up, pop it up, and there is the film. And in this case, it's rewound in the pot and it's ready to be taken to go and process. And then we can take it off to the processing room, go and get it processed, and it's all done. Close the film camera up, and that camera, and that film is ready to be processed in the processing room. Okay, so this time with the K1000, and again the same applies to the V3800s. You've gone out, you've finished shooting with this film camera. This one you haven't got to worry about turning off, but same rules apply as before. So on the top of the camera you can see there's a little directional arrow telling us to go around this way. And that's your rewind arm, we're going to open that up. Same as before. Flip the camera upside down, look along the bottom, we have the battery port, the tripod mount, there's the button that we need to press to unlock the film. So we're going to push it in until it clicks down. And then following the rewind arm, we're going to rewind it, and this time I'm going to rewind it. Listen out for the click and try and take the film out so there's a little bit of the film needle left. So rewind it. So there, I just heard that little click. Very silent when you're actually doing it yourself and not listening through a microphone, you'll hear that click. So that will mean I can now open the back of the film camera and you'll see I've managed to keep that film leader left on there. That will help me when we come to the dark room or the processing room, close the back of that film camera up and that is finished and ready to shoot. Having that little lead will mean I've got some I can pull out when I take it onto the loading spiral, which again we'll show you in a future video, when you come to process the film yourself. The button on the bottom that we've pressed on all the cameras to rewind it is really important, because if you don't press it up, and you just hope, turn this and start rewinding, the risk is that the film spiral, like the take up spool over here, stays locked. So as you're turning it, you run the risk of ripping the film in the camera. Now if that happens and you suddenly open the back of your camera and then your film's all wrapped around the spiral still, you're gonna fog that film because you forgot to press the button and it hasn't rewound in. Now it's not the end of the world if you forget to press that, everyone makes mistakes and that's understandable. Um, but if you forget to press that and you start turning the spiral and you hear that ripping, crunching sound, you think, oh God, I've ripped the film in the spiral. Keep the film in the camera, come back to the college, go into your processing room or any room that you can black out. And then all you've got to do is rather than rewind it, if it's ripped, you'll have to take up and open the back of the camera. And then your canister can come out because the film's ripped out of it. All of your film is over here. So what we do is we take the film and we pull it and this will spin. And we pull the film out of the camera in total darkness. So it coils upon itself. And then 
you can put the film, the raw film, into this light tight pot, seal it, and then you can bring that to college to open up in the processing room to process the film out. It's not ideal, but it happens. Everyone makes mistakes. If that's what happens, that's your kind of help that you can do with that. But that is all of our film all nicely loaded up. We've looked at how to use some of the cameras that we've got here at the college and how to load and unload their film. The next part comes at the time when we're going to look at processing this film to see what we've got on our negatives. Okay, so thanks for watching that. Um, I hope that's going to help you when you're out in the field shooting some film to try not to fall into some usual kind of problems that film photographers who are just starting out might fall into. Um, it's one of those things that it comes across as this is one of the basic series and in the future videos we're going to look at how to load things like medium format and large format film as you progress up. But 35mm certainly it's one of the most popular films that we use here at the college. Um, as I said we're going to go into a later video where we'll look at how to actually process that film and then subsequently print in the dark room from that film. But hopefully that will help you to keep shooting and keep you going. Thanks a lot.